This is part two of my quick story time and please listen because I need advice. Like I said, I go over to my white boyfriend's house for the first time and the first thing I see is a confederate flag. I don't know why I was surprised. Now that I think of it, I should have expected that. Then his mother approaches me with scissors, cuts off a piece of my hair, then she pulls away and says, jokingly, looks like we have an intruder. <laughs> Once I started looking around even more, I started noticing some things these white folks had. And I quote, Negro collectibles. Let me tell y'all about this shit. Y'all see this? Yep, that's Negro collectibles. Here's another one. Basically, they collect racist items. I know about those collectibles. My mom always told me, watch out for the people that own that shit. I was in the sunken place. Those are them serial killer white people. Obviously, her cutting off my hair and seeing those Negro collectibles set off my fight or flight guess which one i chose my flight mm -mm. I snatched the scissors out of her hands i'm aiming it at the racist telling them to stay back so she calls out for her husband and he brings a rifle part three of my quick story time and please listen all the way through because i need advice so i'm at my boyfriend's house his mom cuts off a piece of my hair and i look around the house and i'm seeing confederate flag mat racist collectible items so after she cuts off a piece of my hair i was ready to fight i grabbed the scissors out of her hand and aimed it at her and my boyfriend I told him that they could both get it and she tries to hit me with the i know you're not threatening me in my own home b i was threatened as soon as i walked into your home who approaches a black person with scissors and you literally collect racist items and have a confederate flag bring your grandma up here i'ma threaten her too she calls out for her husband and he brings out a rifle so i try to make a run for it to my car well she throws the pieces of my hair that she cut off at me and says and you can take your naps with you i'm not even hearing her i get into my car and put the keys in child this crazy old white lady grabs the rifle from her husband and starts banging my car with it that bitch thought i was playing with her i wasn't i ran her ass over twice forwards and backwards i was not playing with that crooked tooth bitch ladies this is why you should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime. if you ever find yourself in a situation where a car is following you or making every single turn that you make do not and I repeat, do not drive home. And this is why. So I started talking to this one guy through this online dating app. Yes, I know the dangers, baby. I was desperate. I was taking my chances regardless. He decided to go on a date and that would be the first time that I would ever see him in person. Never FaceTime before this and he looked exactly how he did in his picture. The way I was ready to with his fine self. Point is, he looked scrumptious. Scrumptious, scrumptious. Anyways, y'all get it. Y'all get the point. Well, I was already at the restaurant we were supposed to meet up at and I was waiting for him. We had a really good time, but it was time for me to go to bed because I was getting tired. Mind you, I didn't see his car when he pulled up. He just walked in. But anyways, I start to drive home. Well, 15 minutes into the drive, I kind of noticed that there's a car behind me that has taken every single turn that I have taken since I left the restaurant. So I start taking random turns to see if the car would still follow me and it did. Well, eventually, I stopped to park in a random driveway. At first, that same car passes by me, but then it turns right back around parks behind my car part two of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime and if a random car starts following you to never drive home so like i said i noticed this random car following me so i didn't drive home i parked into some random driveway and the same car that was following me drove right past me I wait a little bit to see if i was in the clear and i see that same car driving right back towards my direction that's when i duck i basically try to make it seem like i went inside even though it's not really my house well, he ends up parking right behind my car and he gets out of his car. At this point, I was terrified, but at least I was in my car so I could run him over if need be. And thankfully, I have tinted windows so when he walked past my car, he didn't see me because I was ducking. I didn't really get to see his face or what he was wearing. He basically looked like a black figure. Like I said, it was really dark outside. Whoever's house I was didn't keep their front porch lights on. Thankfully, then maybe he would have seen me. Well, he gets to the front porch. That's when I immediately get up, turn my car back on, and drive home. Well, the next morning, I was woken up by someone ringing my doorbell. Look outside, and I see the same car from last night parked in my driveway. Part three of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime. Like I said, I was able to get away from whoever was following my car last night. Well, the next morning, someone was ringing my doorbell, so I woke up. I look outside my window because my bedroom window is right at the front of my house. And I see the same car that was following me last night parked in my driveway didn't know what to do at this point but i thought that i should at least try to see what he looks like so i go to my door and i look through that little peephole and i say i almost passed away it is not an exaggeration it was my date from last night i swing open my door and i'm like uh motherfucker how did you find me i didn't give you my address up i straight up confront him i'm not playing around and i said were you following me last night he goes oh i just forgot to get your number and at the moment i was thinking he could be telling the truth because we did only talk through that online dating app we never exchanged numbers so i went ahead and gave him my number and didn't think much of it that was a big mistake because the next day i woke up to 200 missed calls and 50 texts from him for part four part four of why ladies should be cautious while driving home alone at nighttime so my date shows up to my house aka the dude that was following me last night 
and says that he was following me because he never got to get my number. Loki believed him because we never did exchange numbers. I kinda thought it was a little cute. He would follow me just to get my number. At the time, I wasn't really thinking that he could have just like texted me on the dating app for my number. But yeah, I should have never gave him my number. Because when I woke up the next day, I had 200 missed calls and 50 texts from him. So I start reading the texts and it was not an emergency. It was actually a nightmare. The text read something along the lines of, text me back right now, where the hell are you? I need you. Call me back or I swear to God. Well, I didn't even bother replying. Well, as the day went on, he kept texting me and he kept calling me. The texts turned into threats. I was thinking about just blocking him. But then I remembered since he followed me and I drove home, he knew my address. Part 5 of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at night. Like I said, I gave my date my phone number. Then the next morning, I woke up to a bunch of spam texts and calls from him. Basically just saying things like, call me back right now. I need you. Text me back. And then his text started getting worse. He started saying things like, if you don't text me back, I'm going to kill you. I was thinking about blocking him, but I didn't want to make him mad because he knew where I lived. I show his messages and all his calls to my girlfriend. They just tell me to go to the police. One of my really good friends came over and took me to the police station because she didn't want me leaving my house by myself. Well, when we got there, they told us that they couldn't even do anything because he hadn't committed a crime yet. And that the threats that he sent me just weren't enough to make a case. Well, I did end up blocking him. I blocked his number and I blocked him on the online dating site. Basically moved in with my friend. It's been like a week now and I haven't really went home. My girlfriends and family are now helping me find a new place to stay. If there's any advice that anyone wants to give me, please leave it in the comments. Story time how two girls at my school were pregnant by the same guy. Let's get into it. So there was this one girl that went to my school. Let's call her Nami. Nami was the definition of problematic. She beat up everybody. She talked the most shit because she knew she could back it up. But yeah, my good sis Nami, she wasn't strong. She was strong. Another thing about her is that she was the plug for everything. She had chargers. She had food. She had... She was the plug for everybody. There was this one really popular boy at our school. He was like the finest boy at our school. Now mind you, Nami was not that cute. But he started messing with Nami and everybody knew that he was playing her. She swore up and down that everybody was just mad. That everybody was just a hater. He was a player and a heartbreaker child. We knew what was up. Well, rumors started going around that Nami was pregnant. But she never confirmed it until she got word that that popular guy that she was messing with messing with another girl. Well, rumors started going around that that girl was pregnant too. Nami was not having it. She took it upon herself to start going off on her Instagram story. Started posting receipts and i have some of these posts on my instagram stories so make sure to go check it out in one post she confirmed that she was pregnant she also said she was gonna beat up that girl the next day they had to call the ambulance y'all like for part two part two of how two girls at my school were pregnant by the same guy let's jump right into it so like i said nami was going off on her instagram story confirmed that she was pregnant I have some more of the receipts on my instagram story so make sure to go check it out she said that she was gonna beat up that other girl that her man was messing with the next day the next day came babes it came baby i was just walking to second period and i see nami i see nami drop her shit and start swinging she's going crazy when i tell y'all this girl can fight well the other girl got beat up pretty bad and they had to call an ambulance multiple ambulances and apparently that girl was pregnant but she ended up losing her baby in the fight I do have the video of this fight i can't post it because i don't want nami to come for me but also because it's graphic because the other girl lost her baby during that fight things only got worse from there but apparently this complete other girl was also pregnant by nami's man and nami was not having it well, since nami got expelled because she beat up that other girl so bad she pulled up to this new girl's house this is where things get insane like for part three Part three of how two girls in my school were pregnant by the same guy. So like I said, Nami got word that this other girl was pregnant by her boyfriend too. She pulled up to this girl's house and whooped her ass too. That girl didn't lose her baby, but turns out it wasn't even Nami's boyfriend's baby. It was somebody else's baby. Hopefully that girl was okay. Everything was fine. Well, after that, Nami just like disappeared for a while. Everyone was confused. We were like, where the fuck is Nami? She talks shit every single day. People even got a hold of her friends and her friends didn't know where she was at either. She wasn't posting on social media. Literally nobody was in contact with her. With her she just went ghost well eventually apparently she had a fallout with her best friend and her best friend felt that she was done dirty by nami so she took it upon herself to start spilling some tea on her instagram story she let everybody know why nami went ghost she said nami told all of her friends to keep this a secret she wasn't going to keep it a secret no more because that ain't her friend no more she said nami was too embarrassed to come back to social media because she had gotten into a car crash and lost her baby Story time about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend and how she tried to kill me. So I've had problems with my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend multiple times before. I first met her when she DM'd me 
going off on me because I was dating her ex. Well, she apologized and we became really good friends. We actually got really close. We got so close to the point where she actually moved in with me. I even introduced her to my other friends and we all became really close. One day my dad comes over to my apartment and after he left, she was being really weird. She wouldn't talk to me. She was ignoring me. She was being really short with me. And over the next week or so, I noticed my other friends becoming really distant. Well, one of my friends decided to finally talk to me. She told me that my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend told all of them that when my dad came over, he had grabbed her butt and she told me about it. I didn't do anything, which was a fat lie. And that's not even the half of it. She lied to everyone about having cancer so she could get money. She tried to start a fight with me because she claimed I stole her stuff. She blocked me after that. Well, one day, one of my really close friends that she was also friends with sent me a post she made on her Instagram. She posted a dead dog and captioned it, my heart is torn. I accidentally ran over my dog. It was my dog. Like for part two. Part two about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend and how she tried to kill me. So like I said, my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend posted a dead dog on her Instagram. Captioned it saying she was so sad she accidentally ran over her dog. Well, it was my dog. At this time, I'm not home, so I immediately go home. Like I said, she lived with me and I could tell that that picture was taken in the front of my apartment. But when I pull up, I see her looking out our window. When she sees me, she runs away from the window. I'm livid at this point, this bitch killed my dog. So I run to get into my apartment and she meets me at the door. She tells me that there's a fire in our apartment to leave all my belongings outside. So I drop my phone, purse, keys, and we run up to the apartment. She shows me the fire, says she's gonna go get help, and runs out of the apartment. And closes the door behind her. Get a bucket and fill it up with water and put some of the fire out. While I think my boyfriend's ex is going to go get help. Well, the fire started growing faster and I needed to ditch and get out of the apartment. When I tried to get out, I noticed that the lock on the door was changed. The part where you put in your key to get into your apartment was on the inside facing me. I didn't have my keys because she told me to leave them outside. Like for part three. <laughs> again <laughs> this white boy came to pick me up because you know i was trying to get that little diddly dick dick and as soon as we get into the car he's smiling at first and then he starts looking at me weird i'm just like okay whatever so we drive to his house <laughs> his mom is i'm not gonna be able to get through his mom is there and she looks fucking terrified when she looks at me and i'm like okay whatever i'm probably the first bad bitch that he brought to this house i'm sorry <laughs> So we go into his room, you know, we're just chilling, watching a movie, whatever. And then his mom pulls him out of the room. When he comes back, he asks me, do you need to go to the hospital? I'm like, um, no. Why the fuck would I need to go to the hospital? <laughs> he looks at me. He's like, oh, me and my mom noticed that your scalp is peeling off. <gasps> it was my fucking lace. My fucking lace, friend. <gasps> so I'm like, what? And I run into the bathroom. And I'm looking in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I see a whole part of my lace is lifted up. Once I told him it was my hair, got mad and called me a catfish. He made me Uber myself home.
part four, the time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood. But yeah, based off what the police told us was he kept having to come outside to tell the boys to be quiet. He had to work early the next day, so this is a quick story time on how I threw up on my first kiss. No, I never recovered from this moment. It still plays in my head every day. But one day goes by without me thinking about it. But anyway, I met this guy through a mutual friend. His friend went to my school, he went to a different school. One day she just sends me his Snapchat and she tells me to talk to him. Honestly, with the amount of times that boys have screwed me over, I was not feeling it. But honestly, he didn't look like a player. I had a feeling that he could have been genuine. Honestly, was not the cutest, but he still had a good personality, so I still talked to him. Also, at this point in my life, I was going through a really hard time. He was just there to always listen and give me advice, being my person. Regardless of his looks, his effort was sexy. I was like, shit, you trying to get a bonkin'? You trying to get some of this? But I could You trying to drown in it? You trying to... Or not. We decided to hang out one day. I get all cute. I got on my cute little outfit. My hair is all cute. My makeup is all done. Slay. He texts me, tells me that he's here. Go outside, get in his car, and damn. This motherfucker's thing. <laughs> oh. It was unbearably bad. And child, he kept talking. Talking windows up. Couldn't breathe. But I'm gonna hit y'all with the part two.